Hello and welcome to the Daily News Simplified. The what, why and how of the newspaper analysis from the civil service examination's perspective. So today, we are going to discuss the Hindu Daily edition dated 2nd February 2023. Today's session will be solely dedicated to discuss the key highlights and features of the budget 2023 to 2024. However, today's session will also be restricted in sense that because today we will be dealing only those important news in relation to the budget which has appeared in today's newspaper only. But if you people have to cover the budget discussion and analysis in depth and in width, you people are requested to stay tuned to the Rao's IS channel because Baswa Open Sir will be taking the live session to discuss the complete budget on 12th February at 9 am. Thank you and stay tuned. So before starting today's budget discussion, we should understand that whenever we have to read budget, there are two important dimensions. That is, two important areas from which this syllabus appears. One is the economic dimension of the budget. Obviously, this is the major part whenever we have to read or discuss the budget. In economic dimension, this is mainly from the current affairs perspective. The aspects or the trends or data related to budgetary deficits, fiscal deficits, various government schemes which are launched or the funds are allocated for those schemes. And the second dimension is from the polity perspective, that is from the static part. The static part forms the basics of the budget, that what are the constitutional provisions which deal with the budget. As far as the polity or the static part of the budget is concerned, Nave sir has already taken a detailed discussion on this aspect in the DNS dated 29th January 2023. So those of you who want to understand the constitutional provisions, for example, Article 112, Article 113, which are dealing with the budget, which is to be laid down in the parliament every year, those who want to learn about those things, they are requested to go back to the DNS dated 29th January. As far as the economic dimension is concerned, we are dealing with some of the key features of the budget 2023 to 2024 in this session only. So in today's session, what we are going to learn is the Saptrishi concepts or the seven priorities which are to be there in the Amrit Kal period. We will see that what do we exactly mean by Amrit Kal. We will also see that what are the broad division or the areas from which the rupee comes from and what are those areas where the rupees is spent. We will also look at various trends related to the fiscal path, related to the capital expenditure, etc. And we will also have an overview of the specific ministry-wise allocation in this budget. Then we will also have a look about the trends of the revenue as well as capital receipts and expenditure. Further, in the last, we will be dealing with certain key facts related to different sectors, for example, tourism, defense, science and security, social development, green development, as well as urban development, which are there in today's newspaper. As in the beginning, I have already told you that the detailed discussion and analysis on the overall budget will be taken by Baswasa. So we will be dealing with those aspects which has appeared in today's The Hindu Daily Edition. So now let us begin our discussion. The first and the foremost word is the Amrit Kal. Now what do you mean by this particular word or phrase that is Amrit Kal? The finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman has started her budget speech with this very word. However, this word is not introduced by Nirmala Sitaraman because Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi in 2021 has come up with this word. Now this Amrit Kal basically signifies a period between the 75th anniversary of the India's independence up to the 100th anniversary that is centenary. This 25 year period from 75th to 100th anniversary of India's independence will be referred to as Amrit Kal. That is why this year it was the first budget of this particular period that is Amrit Kal. So as per the budget speech, there are three key areas or the vision of this Amrit Kal. First is the opportunity for the citizens with special focus on the youth. Second is growth as well as job creation. And third is strong and stable macroeconomic environment. In order to achieve this vision or to accomplish this vision, there are seven key areas or the priority segments 
of this Amritkal which is known as Saptarishi. Now these terminologies like Saptarishi, Amritkal etc. are taken from our ancient Sanskrit inscriptures. However, from the economy perspective or from the perspective of a prelims examination, the seven key priority areas in this Amritkal or for this budget are first, reaching the last mile connectivity. For example, reaching to the particularly vulnerable tribal groups or other tribal groups. Second is the youth power that is harnessing the demographic dividend. Third is strengthening the financial sector or the overall economic sector as we all know that finance is the basis of any national or state economy. Next is the green growth because India believes that growth must be sustainable in nature and cannot be at the cost of depleting the natural or the exhaustible resources and that is why India says that we require the growth but it should be green in nature and that is why we are also promoting green mobility, decarbonized transport etc. In this year's budget also there are certain key schemes which are launched in order to strengthen the green growth of India. We will discuss all those things. Next is unleashing the potential of various sectors in the Indian economy. Next, special focus on development of infrastructure and strengthening of domestic as well as international investment. And last but not the least is inclusive development. The growth must not be restricted to the discrete centers and it must not lead to increase in inequality and that is why whatever growth or development takes place it must be evenly distributed across all the regions across all the sections and that is where the importance of inclusion lies so this is the broader key framework of this year's budget presented at the first year of amritkal now we shall look at the receipt part the receipt part is the money which is coming to the budget that is the incoming part and the expenditure is the outgoing part. So we will deal with these things one by one. As far as the incoming part is concerned that where is the government getting its money in this budget we should know that what is the increasing or decreasing order of various sectors from which the money is coming to the government. The highest share from which the government gets its money is from the borrowing as well as other liabilities that is 34 percent of all the money which is coming to the government is coming from the borrowings and other liabilities now at the second position comes the goods and services tax that is 17 percent and this is very important the point is to be noted that after borrowings the highest share of the money which the government is getting is from the gst after GST is the income tax as well as the corporation tax that is 15 15% each both lying at the third position. And then comes after the union excise duties, non-tax receipts, customs, non-debt capital receipts etc. Now as far as the examination is concerned what are those things which you people should remember? Now always keep this thing in your mind that data are not very relevant but yes the trends are relevant that which is the for example in this particular aspect which is that particular sector from which the government is getting its maximum share of money. What are the increasing and decreasing order of these shares? Okay however data are not totally irrelevant. So try to remember the data as far as as you can for example here borrowings and other liabilities constitute 34 percent exactly half of it lies at the second part that is the goods and services tax that is 17 percent and then just two percent less than it is the income tax and the corporate tax 15 percent each correct so remember the trends and then comes the data which is very subjective but yes as far as you can remember keep those things in mind okay now comes that which are those sectors where the rupee is spent that is the expenditure part here also the thing is same that at the first level you must be aware about the trends increasing or decreasing order and then at the second level you must also know certain data of the top three positions 
so the maximum share of the expenditure goes in the interest payments that is the loan which the government has taken that is the borrowing part obviously on the principal amount of that loan the interest is yet to be paid and that is the area where the maximum share of expenditure goes that is 20 percent after the interest payment comes the state's share of taxes and duties that is 18 percent because obviously the center has to devolve its certain amount of funds to the states as the share of their taxes and duties this is 18 percent so this lies at the second position immediately after this comes the central sector schemes that is 17 percent now obviously you must know the difference between the central sector schemes as well as the central sponsored schemes as far as the central sector scheme is concerned 17 percent of the total expenditure goes to this part then comes an important part at the fourth position is the finance commissions and other transfers at the nine percent and exactly at the same position is the central sponsored schemes nine percent now let us suppose that if i ask you a question that if i have to compare central sector schemes or the central sponsored schemes which are those schemes where the center is spending most of its money then obviously the answer is central sector scheme correct so that is why these data or these pie charts become important because it help us to have a comparative and relative analysis in different sectors and then comes the other areas for example defense other expenditures subsidies and then pensions correct so i am repeating it the first or the largest sector where the expenditure is missed is the interest payments after it comes the state share of taxes and duties then comes the central sector schemes then comes the finance commission and central sponsored schemes i hope that these both pie charts are clear to you rupee coming from and rupee going to now as far as this particular budget is concerned we shall also have a look on the allocation for specific ministries here also again the data are not very relevant but yes which is that ministry which has got the maximum share of the budget these things are important in prelim examination because they can ask you question to arrange it in increasing or decreasing order so ministry of defense has got the largest share of the budget that is almost around 6 lakhs crore after ministry of defense comes the ministry of road transport and highways and then comes the ministry of railways so first second and third the top three positions are always important because it will help you to select or eliminate certain options defense road transport and then railways after that comes the consumer affairs and public distribution and then comes home affairs and then the other ministries you can have a look but top three positions are very important correct now we shall look at certain trends of the macroeconomic indicators because we remember that when we started our discussion the vision for amrit kal specifically said about the strong and stable macroeconomic environment and that is why in this regard we shall look at certain key trends of the indicators which determine the macro economy so these three colored lines represent the primary deficit fiscal deficit as well as the revenue deficit if we have to compare this financial year with the financial year 2021 and then financial year 2022 we can easily see that gradually not exactly at the same rates but overall all these three deficits are showing a declining trend correct for example primary deficit was around 5.8 and now it is around 2.3 similarly the fiscal deficit has also reduced from 9.2 to 5.9 and this we can guess also because it was the financial year 2020 to 2021 during which the whole country was hard hit by the covid pandemic and that was the year whereby the government spending was increased drastically so obviously at that particular point of time the deficits were at a higher rates but now as the economy is gradually again gaining its momentum these deficits have reduced themselves next comes the capital expenditure part of the government again 
comparing with financial year 16 then 23 and then 24 there has been a continuous and gradual increase in the capital expenditure of the government and if we have to compare it with the financial year 16 the capital expenditure is around four times of it in financial year 16 it was around 2.5 lakh crore and this year budget has pledged around 10 lakhs crore so it is almost four times the capital expenditure in financial year 16. Next important indicator which the budget has provided us is the situation of the non-performing assets of the banks. We all know that the biggest issue which our public sector banks are facing is the issue of the non-performing assets. They not only reduce the profitability of the banks on one hand but they also negatively impact the overall economic situation, investor confidence and all the things which play their role in boosting the national economy. Directly or indirectly, they affect it. But the budget shows that the asset quality in the banks is improving with the lower NPAs. For example, in March 20, then 21 and then 22, again the NPAs are also showing a continuous and gradual declining trend. In March 20, it was around 8.2%. But when it comes to the March 2022 or September 2022, it has reduced to just 5%. Again, the data are not very relevant. Try to remember the data, but more important is the trends of these data. So as far as the fiscal consolidation, capital expenditure or the situations of NPAs are concerned, we are seeing that there is almost a gradual phenomena of reduction or increase of these things. But now come to the foreign exchange reserves. If we have to see the foreign exchange reserves, then we cannot conclude that it is showing some continuous phenomena because in 2020-2021, it was showing an increasing order. Then it was stagnant. Then again, it increased and then it showed a decreasing order. In quarter three of 2022 to 2023, it again rose. So there is not a continuous or the gradual phenomena. Keep this thing also in your mind. Similarly, the line of import cover also first was increasing and then it decreasing and now lately it is also showing some increasing trends. Now this budget has also provided some important figures related to the fiscal management. First, the central government has pledged that it will provide 50 year interest free loan to the state governments. Second, the fiscal deficit of 3.5% of the gross state domestic product is allowed for the states. As far as the overall fiscal deficit concerned, the government is targeting it to make it below 4.5% by 2025 to 2026. And we all know that the situation of fiscal deficit was worsened because of the COVID pandemic, but the government is trying its best to reduce it and make it below 4.5% by the financial year of 2025 to 2026. So these were the certain key facts. Yes, these facts are important. So keep these facts in your mind. Now with the help of this particular chart, we will again look some of the important trends related to the revenue as well as capital receipts and expenditure. For example, as far as the revenue receipts is concerned, we can easily see that compared to the financial year 2022, the financial year 2024, the revenue receipts has increased. Similarly, the capital receipts has also increased in financial year 24 compared to the financial year 22. Yes, I do agree with the fact that when we are comparing the financial year 2022, we are taking the actual data. And when we are taking financial year 2024, we are taking the budgetary estimates. So there are three important terms. One is the budgetary estimates. Second is the revised estimates. And third is the actual estimates. What is the difference between budgetary estimates, revised estimates and actual estimates? This we will understand with the help of one example in a very layman language. For example, in the upcoming year, the government feels that rupees 100 will be spent in order to achieve various goals or aims which they have decided for the national economy. 
so they think that rupees 100 will be enough to complete all those goals so this is the budgetary estimates that is the estimates which are provided in this year's budget to accomplish the goal in the coming financial year but then because we all know that economy is very fluctuating mid-year revision is taken and then the government comes to a conclusion that because certain economic indicators have changed because of the national or international scenarios they think that now they require rupees 102 to accomplish those very goals so because they have revised their estimates this is known as the revised estimates correct now because they feel that 102 rupees is required but when it comes to the actual spending let us assume to achieve those very goals the actual spending was made rupees 101 so this is the actual estimate correct the estimates which are made at the first level in the budget itself is the budgetary estimates then certain corrections are made with the passing time because the economic indicators change and the estimates which are made out of those corrections are known as revised estimates on the basis of those revised estimates the actual expenditure which is done by government or department is known as the actual estimates okay so this was the basic concept of these three terminologies coming back to this chart as far as the revenue expenditure is concerned again compared to financial year 23 it has shown an increasing trend however comparing to the however comparing the financial year 2022 and 2023 it showed a slight decreasing order similarly effective capital expenditure again the order is not continuous first it showed an increasing trend then it showed a slight decreasing trend and this year however it has increased so one thing is very important from this perspective that as far as the financial year 24 is concerned each of these things revenue receipts capital receipts capital expenditure revenue expenditure each of these four things has increased compared to the preceding year of 23 again i am comparing the budgetary estimates of financial year 2024 with the revised estimates of 23 because the actual estimates take around time of two years to come to us okay and because this is the financial year 24 budget so obviously we will not be having revised estimates also so that is why as far as this year is concerned we will we are having budgetary estimates as far as the previous year is concerned we are having budgetary as well as the revised estimates however as far as the financial year 22 is concerned because the two year period has left we also have their actual estimates now today's newspaper mentions some of the key schemes or data related to the sectors like tourism, defense, science and security, social development etc. So we shall be looking at those important things also which are relevant from the examinations perspective. First we will discuss some of the key facts related to the tourism sector which are there in this year's budget. The government has said that they will develop 50 new tourist destinations in order to promote the tourism. As we all know that India's tourism has a huge potential because we also have educational tourism, religious and cultural tourism, scientific tourism, wildlife, eco or adventurous tourism, medical tourism. So that is the fact that we should reap the tourism potential of our country. That is why the government will develop 50 new tourist destinations. Second important term is the unity malls which the government has come up in relation to the development of tourism sector. Now what are these unity malls? Government has yet not provided adequate information that whether these will be physical in nature or these will be digital in nature. However the idea is that these unity malls will be set up in the state capitals in order to promote the local handicrafts. For example and these unity malls will be having a strong linking with one district one product scheme also with the help of these unity malls the local handicrafts or the products with geographical indication status will be promoted as far as this tourism sector is concerned there is no increase in the overall budget allocation compared to the previous year and also no infrastructure status is provided to the tourism industry 
this was one of the major demands from the tourism industry to the government but yes till now the government has not provided the infrastructure status to tourism under the vibrant village programs tourism infrastructure and amenities will be facilitated in the border villages also next we shall move towards our second part that is the defense science and security now the defense budget has got the rise of 13% that is defense budget has increased because the pensions have also increased as far as the capital expenditure for the modernization of military is concerned this capital expenditure has also jumped by 6.7% this year so defense budget has increased capital expenditure for military modernization has also increased these steps you can write in your mains answer also in case the question asks you that what are the various government steps which are done in order to boost our national security or the defense but on the contrary department of space has got 8% less than the previous year so the spending for department of space has reduced as compared to the previous year the, the spending for defense has increased as far as the scientific researches or the scientific investments are concerned the government has proposed to set up 100 labs for developing the applications using 5g services in engineering institutions across the country in addition to this 100 labs there will be three centers of excellence for artificial intelligence which will also be set up so 100 labs for using 5g services in engineering institutions and three ai centers of excellence next we will move towards some of the important announcements in this year's budget for the social development of india the most important being that the funds which were allocated to the mg narega scheme has shown a reducing trend the funds have been cut by 33% and this is one of those areas which the critics have taken up that government has cut the funds allocation for mg narega according to those critics those critics say that if the act is providing 100 days of guaranteed work this 60000 crore fund will not be able to provide the money to the people even if we considered that every person who is presently employed under this particular scheme if that person is doing just 40 days of work even then this 60000 crore money will fall short so how can we expect that this fund will be able to cater the demand of 100 days of guaranteed work similarly the budget allocation for the ministry of minority affairs is also reduced by 38% compared to the last financial year however when it comes to the health especially the ministry of ayush there is around 20% hike in the sums allocated to ministry of ayush next comes an important scheme that is the namaste scheme very important from the prelims perspective 100 crore allocation has been done to the namaste scheme now what does this scheme caters to this scheme caters to the goal of removing the manual scavenging this acronym that is namaste stands for national action plan for mechanized sanitation ecosystem it aims 100% of mechanical desludging of the septic tanks and sewers in all the cities and towns however the scheme is not launched in this year's budget this was launched in last year and this scheme has already subsumed the existing self employment scheme for rehabilitation of manual scavengers so this scheme was running but however it was subsumed under the namaste scheme the budget has proposed 33% increase in the capital expenditure we discussed that this year the capital expenditure budget is estimated to be rupees 10 lakh crore accounting for almost 3.3% of the gdp similarly the jal jeevan mission which was aimed at providing the piped water supply to every rural household by 2024 has also seen 27% hike in the funds flow because we are approaching the year of 2024 and government wants to fulfill the commitment which has made and and that is why the fund allocation has seen a hike in this particular scheme 
As far as the women is concerned, one time small saving schemes has been started for the women. So all the women or the girl child are eligible for this particular scheme. The maximum amount which can be invested in this scheme is rupees 2 lakh and 7.5% of the assured rate of interest is guaranteed in this small saving certificates scheme. Another important acronym in this year's budget is Bharat Shri which stands for Bharat Shared Repository of Inscriptions. This will be a digital epigraphy museum which aim to have digitized ancient inscriptions in the first stage. It will be set up by Archaeological Survey of India at Hyderabad. Now come to, the, now come to those announcements which were made in relation to the green development. In the beginning, we discussed that one of the important components of the Saptarishi in the Amrit Kal was the green growth, that is the green development. So the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas had earmarked Rs. 35,000 crore for priority capital investment. The budget has also waived off the custom duties on the capital goods and machineries for lithium-ion battery manufacturing. Now, we all know that because India is aiming to promote the electric vehicles, but one of the important challenges in this promotion is that we do not have adequate lithium reserves. And for this lithium, we need to be dependent on other countries. But when we import lithium because of higher duties, it will directly or indirectly increase the overall cost of electric vehicles. That is why in order to reduce that cost and to promote electric vehicles, the government has waived off this custom duties on capital goods and the machinery for lithium and battery manufacturing. Specific focus has been given to the off-grid solar projects. We all know that India had a target of installing 100 gigawatts of solar power projects by 2022. Against this 100 gigawatt, as far as of now, only 63 gigawatt target has been accomplished. And out of this 63 gigawatt, the off-grid solar projects constitute less than 5% of the total target. That is why in this year's budget, the government has focused on the off-grid solar connectivity. Further, in this overall green growth initiative, three important programs are there. One is the Mishti program, second is PM Pranam, third is Amit Dharohar. So, Mishti program is in relation to conservation, protection and strengthening the mangroves ecosystem on all the coastal states across India. It stands for Mangrove Initiative for Shoreline Habitats and Tangible Incomes. PM Pranam scheme has to deal with sustainability of the fertilizer's use. It stands for Prime Minister's Program for Restoration, Awareness, Nourishment and Amelioration of Mother Earth. This program seeks to incentivize states and union territories to promote alternative fertilizers and balance use of chemical fertilizers. The third is the Amrit Dharohar. This Amrit Dharohar is dealing with the conservation of wetlands. It will be implemented over next three years to encourage the optimal use of the wetlands and enhance the biodiversity, carbon stock, ecotourism opportunities and income generation for the local communities. In the last, today's newspaper has also focused on the urban development initiatives. So this year's budget has come up with one important fund that is Urban Infrastructure Development Fund. The government will set up this particular fund of rupees 10,000 crore per year for creating the infrastructure in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Now this is a very important step in order to promote regional equality. Because presently, what is happening is that most of the schemes are centered in the tier 1 towns, for example, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, etc. So as a result, these urban areas are experiencing the growth, but on the other hand, they are also facing the challenges of congestion, pollution, illegal slum growth, etc. And this is happening primarily because we do not have adequate tier 2 and tier 3 towns which can cater to the demand of the rising population. So that is why we must also focus on tier 2 and tier 3 cities. 
so for this development this urban infrastructure development fund has been created this is an important figure 10000 crore per year you must remember these things so these were the things which have come in today's the hindu daily edition in relation to the important announcements dealing with the budget this year so that is all for today all the very best and study hard